Hello and welcome back to the Honest Lab Horror Show, the show that we bring to you each and every Friday night. Why do we do this on a Friday night? Because Friday night's horror night. As you can see, the lads aren't here. I am joined by a whole host of females tonight, though. Uh, this is the cast and the crew of Black Mass. Um, we're joined by everyone, so I'll give them the chance to introduce themselves. Uh, we'll start off with Devony, the director. Hello. Yes, uh, I am Devony Pin. Uh, I am the director of Black Mass. Uh, I also wrote the story and produced it, and I played Kelly King. Who wants to go next? Chelsea? Yeah, my name is Chelsea Gilson, and I play Carla. Nice. Uh, Elizabeth? I just got my watch in order here as, it, as it's running across the screen. <laughs> Yeah. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Montanero. I play Judy Murphy. Lauren? Hi, my uh, name's I. Oh, Lauren! <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we can make them fight it okay, out for it. Lauren, you were here first. Go, Lauren. Go, go. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thank you. My name is Lauren Darman, and I play Darlene Collins. Uh, Laura? <laughs> Thank you. Oh my gosh, you said it right, Laura. Um, <laughs> Yeah, my name is Clara Jean Vimeira Sullivan, and I play Vicky Dawson. And then Missy? Hi, I am Missy Andrea. I am the special effects makeup artist for Black Mass. So, no physical appearance of me, but little bits of me are in there every now and again. I mean, the behind the scenes work is just as important. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sorry about that. Like I said, kittens, and they are knocking over everything. So. Aww. The real horror is also living with three-month-old kittens, not only this movie, so. <laughs> um, as I says, this is the the cast and the crew of Black Mass. Um, I had the, the pleasure of seeing this and checking it out, and it will not disappoint. Um, but I, we won't go too much into the story like we normally do because I don't want to ruin it for everybody. Um, but what we'll do is we'll talk about where it came from, the ideas, what it was like on set, and uh, you can you can slat you can slate your director here if you want, if she was mean to you. <laughs> oh, um, never! No, she was wonderful. That's not what she was saying off screen. That's exaggerating. Seventy is really like the best person to work with. To be that's, honest, that's definitely not what she was saying off screen. <laughs> Love it. Don't say um, that. Um, well, no. <laughs> Devonie, we'll start with we'll start with yourself. Um, obviously, we don't want to go too much into it, and I don't want to spoil anything. So, where did this start for you, and how did this come about? Um, that's Missy. Hi, Missy. Hi. <laughs> uh, well, for me, um, I'm really passionate about true crime. It's uh, it's a favorite subgenre of mine, and um, I have specific cases that I had studied extensively um, because I like to pull, um, as an actress, I like to pull from reality. So um, when I started playing a lot of villains, I started studying um, real life ones in addition to um, to supernatural ones. And so um, that led me to a lot of infamous true crime cases. Um, about six or seven years ago now, um, I made a, a movie about Charles Manson and his family. and um, it, uh, it did well, <laughs> and I kind of got the bug for that. Um, and so I had this other case in mind that is um, fairly well known that had been covered a lot also, but that I saw um, a lot of opportunity to showcase in a new way. So for me, um, when I, I make films and I've, I've produced, this is my shoot 15th or 16th feature that I produced. Um, and so I wanted to present movies that are not quite as safe, I guess you could say, um, and things and concepts that are popular or trendy, but then present them to an audience in a different way that you've seen before. So the same thing happened um, with Black Mass. I, I saw um, a topic that was widely covered and people thought that they knew, but there was so much of the story that was not being told. Um, so many elements, so many people involved that were not being seen or heard. And so for this, um, I thought it was an interesting opportunity cinematically to approach the topic of uh, victims of people who are 
affected by serial killers. A lot of times um, in the media, in society, we kind of lend them celebrity or glorify them. And, um, and a lot of times everyone around the world can say the name. They know who they are. They know something about their, their crimes. But very, very few times can anyone name a victim or name someone that was um, impacted by them. And this particular person, there was just um, a focus on, on them and not on the hundreds, if not thousands of people that their crimes have had an impact on. So for this approach um, to the story, we chose just a 24 hour period in the life of this person. And the entire movie is told from their POV or over their shoulder. So you literally step into the shoes of a serial killer and live their day. And what you experience with that is the interactions they have with their with the people around them and with the world around them. And so in using this format, we get to know the people that he's about to harm and the people that he does. And from what we've seen so far, um, what I'm hoping to do with it was to make you think about this crime and criminals in general, serial killers, anyone who commits crime in general, to change the narrative and change the perspective on how you view it and think about the impact that's happening instead of the people themselves. So you, you touched on something there because that was the first thing that I seen of this. Um, obviously, former guest and friend of the show, Eva, posted, it, posted yes. something up and it was like, don't say his name, say remember theirs. Uh, and yes. I was like, I was like, that's a genius little tagline, um, because as you says, the name of the person that done it is normally the one that's remembered. And you touched on, yes. say, say Charles Manson earlier, um, like, how many victims can you remember from the Charles Manson thing apart from um, Sharon Tate? Is Sharon the only Tate one that I know. is generally, yeah, the only one, and um, and. There's a lot of well-known people involved in it, but the, the reason that she's really remembered is because of her celebrity. And I just think it was, there was so much of a story that wasn't being told. These these are real people with real hopes, real dreams. Um, the girls in our story were going to college. They they had hopes, they, they had fears, they had uh, families and friends, you know, they were regular people in a moment, in a very important moment in their life, just, you know, bright-eyed and not ex not expecting anything and something that's really important with this case too is you know in 1978 the term serial killer didn't exist yet um the the level of evil that was out there in the world there was no social media you know news was much slower uh, in our country when you left the county uh let alone the state lines that was the end of it. Like police, um, police forces didn't communicate with each other yet. So nobody knew what was going on in the world. And, and a lot of, that's why there's such a, a, a wave of serial killers in this era is because these crimes are so easily committed. So these girls, you know, didn't know what was coming in any capacity. They were completely blindsided by pure evil and they were real people. Um, I think that gets lost on on a lot of times when you tell a story, you know, the focus is on who would commit these crimes and why. And not that, you know, someone like you or I or any of us, you know, could forever have our lives changed, if not ended. Uh, like, that's probably the best way to put it. Like, it's it's done in a way that nobody like social media now has changed things somewhat for the better. Um, in terms of this person has done this and it's shared all around the world and people know the face then but yeah. there's also the bad side of it where this person done this and they share a face that turns out to be the wrong person so like social yeah. media has become great but a problem at, at the same time so I think it's a for, another way too to get celebrity. And so I think that's the reason that I wanted to tell this story now is because I think even though it took place in the 70s, it's more uh, relevant than ever because you see like lots of mass shootings and things happening where, you know, the people who are committing crimes are becoming infamous online or in the news. And so creating crimes, hurting people, killing people is a way to get notoriety. And so I think it's more 
important now than ever to make sure that celebrity is not given to criminals. Yeah, it, it's it, really it, easy to glorify. It, it, it's really easy to glorify the killer in a story that took place now what feels like a long time ago it still is kind of recent really when you think about it but it's like our society has this way to like glorify and romanticize because we hollywood a story and devany really took this and i think taking it from from his point of view and, and like really the camera work and cinematography of this movie is incredible because just the that that yeah voyeuristic approach and it's it's see it's really humanizing the victims and not glorifying the killer i think for one of the first times especially with this particular story yeah like you, you see it in terms of obviously slasher movies that aren't real like you, yeah. you take it nightmare on elm street obviously is, is my favorite um yeah. one like that's a that's a serial killer that shouldn't have been glorified and made famous for the way they were i know it's a it's a fictional character but as you says they they take like cinema and movies have taken villains and made them likable mm -hmm. yeah. this this movie really didn't right um and it's very different in this movie as well because you don't see too much of of said person yes. uh well obviously face wise and and stuff as he says, it's a POV basically over his shoulder. Um, and it shows the work that they do in order to harm others, to keep things covered. Um, but like we, we, we'll move on and I'll, I'll touch on to one of the girls there. Uh, Chelsea, what was it like making this movie? So I will say that uh, usually horror are the most fun, right? Like I love a good scream queen. I love diving into a horror film and like, I'm actually usually really scared on set. Like I think there's something about the, the whole terror of it. Like it's the easiest one to act in because it's that heightened sense the whole time you're there. It's, it's really fun. Uh, this movie, while one of my favorite projects was not fun because the story was too real. So I was, watching these testimonies or uh, during some of the trials and, and looking at my character and trying to get the way she spoke. And she had this kind of a, a little bit of a, almost like a Southern little draw to it. So I kept listening to it and watching it. And then I was just way too in it. And then Missy did such an incredible job with the SFX makeup. And again, that's usually something that's so fun for me. Like I love the prosthetics. I love it coming to life. But then when I really thought about, no, this. This is someone real. I'm portraying something real. And the story, yeah, it like ripped my heart out in that way. It really like affected me in such a way. And uh, so it, it was such a cool project to work on. I'm so glad that I worked on it. I still have not got to see the whole thing. So I'm so excited to see it too. But yeah, there, there's just something about, Devony did such a good job of making it feel so real. And because of that, it was really hard to dissociate as an actress. Uh, that's like that's a great way of describing it and unfortunately like as you says you haven't seen it fully i've had the chance to see it so like watching the character development the character arc of of all the characters in it was great to see and obviously whatever happens in the movie i'm not going to touch into it which is a bit strange for for the episodes but uh I, as i says i said as we talked about it off screen i don't want to ruin it for anybody and i said it coming on um normally if we have spoilers coming out it's movies that have made it so far into the cinema or, or been released um so it makes it a bit more difficult but the arc of the characters in this and even the arc of the the main protagonist was brilliantly done um it was dark it was gritty but it wasn't all done at night either where yep. you see daytime shots which make horror movies better i think me too because obviously you, you see certain ones, um, Friday the 13th, you see a day scene and then everyone gets killed sort of in the middle of the night. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street obviously happens at night, but like Halloween was one of the first ones really where you see daytime shots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I got a lot of Halloween vibes off some of this um, in ways that like you see the main protagonist s sort of standing around and you're like, I've seen this, this, this works this works <laughs> um so to draw comparisons like that and as you says it's it's a true story so it makes it that bit more scary mm -hmm. yeah um but 
like obviously working on set is is different um for from behind the camera for Devney obviously or for Missy there doing the SFX to being on the other side um so what what was it like for yourself Elizabeth well this was my feature film debut so I'm very much spoiled for my next experiences <laughs> in this industry with Devney as a director it, it um, can only get worse <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But but Devney created a space for all of us that allowed us to really dive deep into these real life people and their real life stories. Um, we were living, breathing a day in the life of, you know, these people. And you know, this this space became very intimate for all of us. I feel like I became very close to each and every one of these girls. And, um, you know, it really made it that much more close to home and really putting it into that perspective and that headspace that these innocent young women were, were facing, you know, this was their real life and this tragedy, you know? So, um, yeah, it was it was a difficult project to work on in the sense of that, you know, it is so real, but it felt safe thanks to Devony. So I really appreciate that um, about her direction. I mean, you, you touched on something there saying that these innocent girls and that's exactly what it was. This isn't like other horror films where you see, say, the group of cheerleaders are bullying somebody or or something happens in the school where they can be victimized but then become the victim these were legitimately just people living their day living their life along their day um and and things like that like it's it you was even, it's scary to think about you even see we mentioned you know before you know how we're <laughs> eating pretzels around the the tv you know that's it's real life little tidbits little slices of life if you will and i love that little element because it makes you really understand that this was just their life everyday life they were young women in college and and this horror happened but i i love those little pieces that we we have sprinkled in there that really make you feel like oh this was just normal life you know so um yeah, I think that also just made us feel like more comfortable in that space having those moments, if that makes sense. That, that was your first problem, eating pretzels. <laughs> just no. I love pretzels. So. <laughs> hey, I have to say, like me and Elizabeth were eating the heck out of those pretzels <laughs> during one of the rehearsal times. I, I, specifically for me and my character on the scene that we were doing, I'm all about the continuity, right? So every time we went back and I was like, all right, I ate three this time. I got to eat three again this time. <laughs> so every time I was like eating three or four, depending on what was the angle on how much I ate. <laughs> so so Devony, when, yeah. when you look back at the budget there that you had for this movie, you can blame Lara there for uh, <laughs> for crafty for blowing it on pretzels. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, 100%. I finished the whole bag, I think, by the end of that I day. I, I, I don't think but she was even on camera for that part. So <laughs> I do remember um, walking past an empty bag of pretzels later in the night, and I thought it was from Crafty, but now I know what it really is. <laughs> so that's good to clarify that for me. Hey, my method you know what? I'm all about it. I'm all about it. So, Lara, we might as well go to you then. Um, what, what was your experience on set like? Oh, my oh gosh. as you can tell, I mean, a blast. Like, it was just like every, I, just like Elizabeth said, like, we connected and, you know, we're stuck in a good way. You know, we were stuck in, our, you know, this living space before each scene for a while. And we really got to know each other. We really got to become sorority sisters in a way. And we were joking and having fun. And um, as soon as the scene hit, like, it, it, we were ready. We were there. We were in, in that moment already. And it made it so fun. I mean, working with all these ladies, and I, for some of them I knew from working um, in the horror scene in the past, and some of, and most of them I did not know, but mm -hmm. Devony obviously has worked also with a lot of them. So I, tr like, it was one of those things where you know 
I knew Devaney in the sense where I'm like, oh, I want to be a part of this. She picks the most amazing people, and she mm -hmm. did. I mean, this whole film, really it, again, in the back and in front of the camera, everybody was there to work and get this done in a, in, in a respectful manner. I mean, so much respect on set. It was insane. Like, it was, it was a really good experience for su such a short amount of time that we all worked together. It was beautiful, yes. and I got asked to do, um, to choreograph a little scene because I also am a dancer choreographer outside of acting. And Devonie was like, "You do this, let's do this," and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" Because it's so nice when your friends slash coworkers see other parts of you that, um, like, sometimes a lot of my friends in film don't know I do those things. But when she had asked that, I go, "Oh my gosh!" Like, like to to know that she respects me in that light as well and not just an actor just made me feel so special and i'm excited to in the trailer you could see the little scene i got to put together and i was like <laughs> just so excited i, I, and... I, was, I was gonna say i imagine it's the scene near enough to the start <laughs> yeah. I, 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 we can give her credit for that so uh, we have um it, we do have cheerleaders. So I, I love that you mentioned the Halloween aspect because it is there is traces of that. So I wanted to present it almost like it's going to be a fun slasher movie. And in reality, it is not. It is a no. very, very serious true crime no, movie. No. However, <laughs> um, there are there are all the elements there. I mean, we have cheerleaders. We have a shower scene. We have the guy stalking. They're all there. But um, but again, it's presented in a different way. So um, I really I, I look I hired um professional dancers. I mean, we had like, you know, a prima ballerina, we had professional, yeah, we had like the cream of the crop to play our cheerleaders. And um, Laura Jean, I knew would understand uh, not only how to put together exceptional choreography, but she understands the tone within film itself and also uh, within the genre itself, because she's worked in it. So um, uh, I know you've seen the movie, Greg, so you know, just, you know, not only are they adorable, our, our cheerleaders are already girls, but um, they have a fantastic routine that we really heavily featured um, in the introduction to all of our girls as um, as our our protagonist is studying the sorority house early in the day. We, we use that as a, an opportunity to get to know the girls themselves and how their daily routine goes. That's it. That's so a very you, good Laura, word there. <laughs> that's a very good it way of great. describing it. Yeah. That he was, yeah, he was like, studying and, them. And, yeah. yeah, and it, it was so great. And like to put that together is one of those things where um, I have a dad that was actually a cheerleader in the 70s. And oh, cool. uh, I call, immediately called him and was like, so I have this idea and I want you to let me know. And like specifically the claps, like the way they're clapping um, is not the way you would see a typical cheerleader clap nowadays in 2023. Right. But the way they're clapping is exactly the way most cheerleaders clap in the 60s and 70s and up until maybe 1982, 83. So I was like, okay. So the little details like that, I love putting together. I love that. It just, it makes me so happy. Um, and again, like the process and like just of the character of Devin introducing me to who I was and the story behind her, it's just it was mind blowing and how everybody was connected in this film and in, in the story itself, not just the film, but the whole background of everything. Um, it, it, by the end of that, when we were doing the scenes, and I said this in the last okay. interview that we had, um, when we got to the part where we're on set and you hear scream, or you hear something i mean all of us would look at each other and it would felt if we would feel for that person we, you know as uh, not only just that the actor but the character who they are who they're being and we'd look at each other and be like are are they okay are they going to be okay after this scene are they emotionally do they need us there and um for, for all of us just to know each other for just a few days and already have that connection already worry for our co-stars it is just mind blowing and beautiful because it's rare to have that and that connection with each other for sure. That's that's certainly something that um that comes up a lot when we have when I've done interviews with with people on set of 
um, say horror movies. Now I've done a, a lot of interviews with the cast of Mute Later Two. Um, obviously, one of your co-stars, Eva, is going to be in that. Um, so I've done quite a, a lot with that whole cast and crew, and they all seem to be very close. It seems to be a, a common trait with horror movies. Ah people tend to bond a lot more than than say say i don't know action movies or or yeah. whatever because everything's all go 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 in horror people tend to stay alive for generally sort of 40 50 minutes or or, or longer so you're going to be on set a lot longer than mm-hmm. than most movies and so speaking it, of sets yeah. i'm going to lead out though because i am technically on one right now. <laughs> uh, but I am going Amazing. to say, I know, and here I am, I'm talking about connection. I'm gonna leave everybody. But okay, <laughs> I have to go. I'm on, I'm I'm somewhere I can't say. Um, love you guys and thank you for everything. Thank you, Greg. And everyone out there, please watch the black mask. It's yes. uh, yeah, I haven't seen it yet. I'm so excited. But <laughs> we were there and let me tell you, and these girls are gonna tell you that it, you it really it dives into these girls and I really need you to watch it because it is a new idea of its time and I love everybody a part of it and I hope everyone loves it just as much as we loved doing it and thank you thank you so much <laughs> Laura, thank you Debbie I love it yeah absolutely bye everybody <laughs> have fun on set honey bye, bye. <laughs> That's that's not normally something that happens, folks. But uh, <laughs> as she says, she's 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 on set, so we'll allow it this time. Yeah, you can't get spoilers. Someone's on set and leaving midway. This is a different, completely different episode than normal. So let's just go for it. Let's. I, I, as, actually, as I said, uh, there's two other the... girls who are on set right now too, um, who were trying to come and make it, but they're actually actively filming in the moment, so they couldn't. But I love that Laura came out. But that just that's... goes to show you, like my girls are really talented. So you know they work, they work often, and um, and you know I, we have the best team, the absolute best team. Absolutely. Um, Lauren, what was it like for yourself on set? It was such a special project to work on. I think it was really cool to work with a female director. I really, really enjoyed that, Daphne. It was awesome. And Michelle, our producer too, was really, really cool. Um, I think as an actor, it's so important to feel comfortable on set. And it's crazy how if you don't feel really comfortable with who you're working with, it can completely affect how you act and how you portray the character. Um, So that was awesome. I felt immediately really comfortable from the first day, which was special. But aside from that, it was definitely very heavy. I had never worked in a role that was a real person before. And it's crazy how psychologically you view the entire process very, very differently. And I felt a huge kind of weight, not only of the situation, but almost a pressure and responsibility to really do this character justice because it felt like if I didn't, it wouldn't really be fair because of everything that these girls went through. Um, And so, yeah, I I worked really hard with the process and I got super specific in detail. And it also being, so I'm only 21 and a lot of my really close friends are in a sorority. So that was kind of good for me as an actor to be able to relate to, but also dug very deep with the whole. That, That could have been like, that could be your friends. Yeah, right. yeah, and, and it just gave a lot of perspective to the, I, yeah, and, and a lot of the actors, I couldn't help but kind of, you know, imagine my friend a, as them. and um, Like, like, like they, as you're saying there, your friends are in a sorority, right? So we know this is a true story, right? So you're saying it, it, it cut a lot deeper, but have you seen the movie Sorority Row? I have not. She's very no. Yeah, she's, she's, she's too young for it. <laughs> yeah, so ba- basically it. it's, it's, it. <laughs> it's a horror movie set, set about a sorority but i was going to say if you'd seen it did that cut as deep knowing that your friends are in sororities probably not because it's it, it's not a true story you know that kind of way so mm-hmm. for the true story aspect it's obviously cutting a lot deeper for everybody yeah yeah and um, because obviously mm-hmm. said people still have probably i don't know whether they're still alive or they have family that are still alive and and will watch this and and things so for having to betray somebody that they know and love makes it a lot harder because you've got to get it right 
Mm-hmm. So the, the work has to be put in. Like you can't just phone it in. Absolutely. It was uh, um, an extensive process to to cast this, just to 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 cheer on Lauren a little bit bit for a minute here. Um, you know, when horror is escapism, right? We watch Sorority Row because you know we want to have fun. We want to turn our brain off. We there's I, that I watched hard, Sorority Row because I got a free ticket to the it. cinema. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So you want to you want to feel that you want to be able to. You, you can enjoy it because there is that hard line of knowing that it's not real. You can just have fun with it. Yeah. On this, you can't. And there's so many things that parallel the, the I don't want to say feel good, but I guess it is feel good <laughs> horror movies and slashes that, are, that has the same elements, but it hits very, very differently. And that was the intention, but it, it was executed so well by my cast. That's why, you know, a lot of times in slasher movies, you can hire, you know, the hot bimbo. It doesn't really matter because we're just, we want to see her get gory and go away. You know what I mean? That, that doesn't matter. But on this, you know, I needed to not only have um, actors that looked like the people they're portraying, but that had extensive acting range to play up those elements, but then also bring incredible truth in the tiniest details to these people because the entire movie didn't work if in brief moments, you don't see these people, like these people, root for these people, care about them. Um, And so in the framework of this movie, it's from the perspective of, of of this killer, right? So, in his tendencies, he's not sitting around for long periods of time with these girls to give the actors the opportunity to create that emotional connection that a lot of films have. A lot of times you watch your few surviving characters for an entire movie before you know they're gonna eat it or not. Um, and so you have that time to be emotionally invested. Here, because of who this person was, because of the narcissism, because of, um, the focus on himself, we had to find organic moments in which he would be observing these people in order for the audience to learn about them. And my actresses, um, Lauren especially, really, really understood that and brought that so quickly, so effortlessly to these characters that you love them. You want to spend more time with them. You care when he comes back for them it you feel it and so that is really just a testament to how incredibly talented these actors are in this movie that they're able to bring so many layers so many details so much emotion while making it feel like a casual day walking by the window with no it's just it's i i think it's easy to overlook really quickly but i just need to to drill home what talent it takes to be able to achieve that and make it look effortless i mean like as you says it, it in terms of horror when it's not real you tend to well, i do i tend to root for the bad guy just to see him yes uh fuck people up pretty much <laughs> um but this one i found myself going because obviously as it says off, off screen i'm not for him, isn't it? yeah i i'm not i'm not a uh, i'm not a True, a true crime person, so I knew nothing about said story or oh, um, anything. And I said to you in in the in the chat, Devony, that what I thought it was early. And when it, when yeah. it came to it, I was like deadly. Yes. But um, this time, I found myself not rooting for the killer, for a change. No, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, until I found out it was an actual full-on true story, I was like, I'm not rooting for the killer, but I'm not rooting for anybody. It was just <laughs> kind of thing. And then I was like, yeah, I was no. like, I was like, oh wait, no wait, this is a true story. I was like, maybe I shouldn't be at that. But, the, but that's exactly <laughs> the the conflict that that the viewer is supposed to have watching this is you're supposed to see all the elements that you would normally see in a movie or even in a true crime case, and then question them. That's exact. That's exactly what we want to do because that's the first step in having the conversation and changing the narrative and changing how we as 
as viewers and also as society um, think about these kinds of stories and these kind of cases. We have to question who, who am I rooting for on this? And going into it with, you know, the person who this is at the center of um, has so much fame and is generally who you think you're supposed to root for to come out of it questioning that and then not rooting for him is is uh, a big win. And again, you see, you know, the whole thing is very voyeuristic. So um, it didn't necessarily, it wasn't necessarily going to work. But my girls brought reality to these these people. They're not just so, fun, really cute looking sorority girls, you know, having a pillow fight. They're they they brought authenticity to to these young women and and then um, I'm just very proud of, of the performances that everyone gives that, us. That's also another really good fact for this. Um obviously you see in, in say certain movies where they go to a sorority there always seems to be half naked people walking around there seems yep. to be this that and the other happening that's not real though do you know what i mean that's just no. all right no we understand guys, we, under- we, don't really do that. <laughs> we, we, under- we understand that it's done for movies as well but there are some people that think that that generally happens now it might happen in, in some places but not to the extent that you see it so when when you see a real no. sorority in this where there's not fucking half naked people walking around. There's not big mad orgies happening. It's yeah. just a, a it's just a normal building where people are going to sleep and getting up to go to college and and living theoretically. Well, and uh, and to further I, on that, everything that happens in this movie, all the mundane stuff. I mean, not the pretzels, but pretty much everything else that you're seeing the girls do, um, hanging out at the bar, being on the phone. Um, chatting with each other, doing the laundry, um, some of the dialogue that seems kind of throwaway. All of that is actually things that happened that day. It's all corroborated by, by um, the witness testimony from the crime case. So even though it feels kind of like- We're just passing we're just time. In, it, yes, those are that is actually, you were seeing the lives that they were living that day. I, mean, I hate uh, to be, the, be another Lara here, but I also have to go. I have a <laughs> Zoom call back for a thriller, so if I book it, maybe yeah. I can come back and chat about it. But uh, I only have four minutes, so you're dropping. We're dropping like flies. But thank you <laughs> so much. Uh, Break a leg. Chelsea, is there anything else, anything you want to leave uh, before you do? Anything you want to say? Leave the just, the audience with. The project is really special and I think we could go on for forever about it but it but the way that you said you know a fun type of feel-good horror movie right like for me yeah if that that's something like a roller coaster and you have these peaks and valleys and and the daylight scenes are when you're coming up and then at the night all the bad shit happens and shit hits the fan you get this up and down because this movie was so voyeuristic even though you have the up and down of that roller coaster it's layered on that, you, that you're always having this, what is he looking for? What is he gonna see next? When is this gonna happen? Even in the daylight. And it's layered with that true story. So like the peaks are still so much smaller. So it it's like, you you still, I think, get this thriller horror sense through the entire movie. And again, I have not seen it, but just reading it and, and seeing what I saw from being on set and the feel of it and the shots that I did get to see, I think it's really unique. And I think that there, perhaps has not been something that has been done so well in this genre before. So it is a must see. Thank you guys for having me. Jesse, Thank you. See you later. Bye. Get the part. Right. Go get Thank the girl. You. Now we'll move on to what a lot of people tend to not think about. Uh, definitely the behind the crew in the special effects. Missy, tell us your story. Uh, well, yeah, being the fact that I was on the strictly as special effects and not any of the getting the girls ready and, you know, presentable and in their style, I definitely have what is probably probably considered the worst quote unquote portion of this because I'm literally recreating like the entire massacre and some of the most gnarly and most disgusting things. So it's really definitely something that is different. Um, even compared to uh, even like the actresses and all that, like they're living and breathing it, but I'm here having to like recreate this. And there is a little bit of this pressure too, because it's not, you know, I do I do this for a living, makeup is my full-time job and I've done other 
special effects stuff, but going back to the point of like, that's all fake and that's all just certain things that you create. Like, oh, somebody is getting stabbed. Somebody is like hitting their head and bleeding. Like little things like that is a like different versus like, let me recreate like this actual victim of things that actually happened to them. So there definitely is a little bit of a heavier sense on this one than on other projects I've worked on for that reason alone. I definitely have to, it's not even something that I can really be mindful about because it's like, I don't, I don't need to sugarcoat or hold off to be a little bit more, I don't want to say like, I don't want to say PC, but a little bit more sensitive about the audience and how they might view it. Because I mean, the reality of this person in the story is that it really was that vicious and it really was that gnarly and disgusting. And I had to really emulate that in a lot of the blood work and a lot of the pieces and stuff that I've done. Um, it was definitely a lot of fun though, still, regardless of the story. Um, when I originally got the call about it and I read the script, like my jaw dropped. I was like, this is nasty and I'm here for it. Like, I love it. I'm a big, I'm I'm a big horror girly. Um, I've, you know, I'm only, I'm only 25, but I have seen like the range of horror movies from like the forties, the fifties, like I watch everything and I am a little bit into true crime as well. So th that was the thing too, going back to like the very first original part of this conversation is I always did say like people, like people get the question a lot if there's anything like that you won't do as an artist. And I did always wonder how I would feel being approached about doing something regarding a serial killer, because I do think that no matter how well some of the actors portray and actresses, there is a little bit of that celebrity that gets pushed because usually because of who is portraying them and not what is happening. And people tend to get lost in that. So I think um, this one was still an easy yes, because not only do I love Devaney, um, but I once I read through it, I love the different take and the completely different perspective. Like, you know, not saying the name, not really giving a full like real moment of humanizing or showing what this person was like outside of it. Like, you know, at the end of the day, like we, sh we shouldn't care about that because it's not about who they were. It's about what they did. So I, I was really interesting that I finally did get an offer to do something regarding a serial killer. And it was exactly under the pretenses that I would feel comfortable doing it under because it's more about the victims and not about them and it is interesting as well because you know as i said like these are college days girls so it's like i'm kind of recreating things that could happen to people within my age gap like people that are my friend's age and maybe even my age so that's also something i thought about um and i don't really think about things like that when i'm doing special effects and makeup and things like that because it's not it's not real none of it is real but this is the one thing that was some things that happen to real people and people my age, people my friend's age. So it was definitely a lot different for me um, working on it in that sense, rather than the casual, oh, I'm going to come and like have some fun with blood today. Like it was definitely a different vibe. I mean, as you said there, again, we go back to it being a true story. Mm -hmm. Everything, everything reverts back to it being a true story. That's what makes yeah. it worse. Better, yeah, and that's, well, that's the thing I so I did a love about it as well is as is, is complicated as it was sometimes so, you know to really go there. I love the fact that Devony did want to go there because it is it is the reality. Like my biggest issue with true crime is the romanticization and sometimes the sexualization of these serial killers and what they do. And that's not like that's not the point of telling the story, but it gets lost. And so I love that we did really kind of have to go for it because I think I do think a lot of people will get uncomfortable and I do think a lot of people are really going to like how vicious we really went with it sometimes, but it's also just how it was like this person was vicious. This person was this vile, horrible person. And we, I, I love that as complicated as it could be and as shocking as it will be probably to the public, I love that that is the focus because it, I think it'll really remove that element of how sexualized, how glamorized this whole scenario was. You said there that um, people won't like how, how vicious you got with this, right? And I, mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet money that those people that will get uncomfortable with how vicious you got in this are the same people that like the likes of Terrifier and Terrifier too. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with them. 
But because right. it's not a, it's not a true story, hmm. they don't mind the gore. You don't mind yeah. people getting carved up and things like that. Yeah. You know I mean, so like you've got to be able to to switch knowing, like I, as I says, I found myself at the start of this going, okay, I'm gonna be rooting for for the bad guy as I normally do. And then like I was like, no wait, this is a true story, so I can't do that. Do you know what I mean like that's that is just yeah. taking taking a, a criminal's thing going, Yeah, that was that was well worth the job. <laughs> um so like even for for to change my perspective you're doing well. Because it's you, normally <laughs> it's normally bad guy for me. Like I have a I have a I have bad guys tattooed on my arms. There you go. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have a good I have um, a ghost face tattoo, them? so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, hang on. where's the camera gone? Oh. And, and to to kind of talk about that, first of all, I want to see your I want to see your sleeves. Yeah, love yeah, it. Let's go. So obviously okay. that's that's a very contentious one because of other <laughs> issues outside of the movie. Yes. We're, <laughs> uh, but but that actually ties in perfectly. What I was about to say is, um, I don't. I want the audiences to feel un- uncomfortable watching this and i want you to question you know your fandom i guess in this particular case and cases like it however we're horror fans too so you know i want you to enjoy the movie i want you to to go on the ups and downs of it you know there is something for everyone here i think um at least we were hoping that it would be it was designed that way um but the point is is to to root for the guys on your sleeve and to leave horror in film and yeah, to, where it should be. to know to know where the line is to draw it and to not bring um, horror into our reality to think about it appropriately to to know who the bad guys are in real life who we're not rooting for and to know who the guy is in cinema like the ones on your sleeves and the ones on missy's sleeves I mean, those are the ones to have fun with and, and really go there and I mean, get as, as gnarly as you want. I'm a Terrifier fan also. So, you I mean, I like the worst of it and I love my gore. I love, I love, love, love horror. I, I work exclusively in it. Um, and there's a place for that. There's a place for the most disturbing of material and the weirdest of the fans who love it, self-included. Um, but my, my message is that Black Mass and stories like it don't fit in that category and i hope to have the conversation to start separating it absolutely well, that, and that's, what the- I, uh, that's what i really really loved about taking on the project as well as an effects artist is i was i'm happy that it's something that i could do i could do what i love but also be able to tell a story from a completely new perspective and hopefully in a way that will kind of shift how people view serial killers and especially this particular one because you know they're very again like glamorized nowadays and so i loved the take and i love that i was also i love that i was also given the opportunity to showcase like my skill and what i do yeah. while still making it important to tell and it wasn't just for fun or for like just not strictly just for shock value or to like really go there it was more for like let's change the narrative and so i really love that when I get to, I love that I want to get to do a project that doesn't go against like my morals or against anything that makes me genuinely uncomfortable in a way of like, oh, I wouldn't really want to do this. I wouldn't want my name attached to that. But I'm, I'm happy that with the direction that was taken in this film with everybody, because everybody, even like the cast sitting in my chair and getting it done, like, and we all kind of had this conversation of like, this is terrible, isn't it? And it, you know, it's like, it's like a harsh reality when you're just like, hi, how are you? Oh my gosh, this is so fun. We're making a movie. But like, this is real. <laughs> like, this is real, right? Like, this really is something that went down. Yeah. Um, and I'm sorry. So I want to like, just brag on Missy really quickly. Um, Missy had like a craft services style budget to make this whole film and <laughs> and she you know she didn't steer away at it um, she's true indie horror chick she kind of laughed a little bit and then was like all right game on and I mean when you see the movie her work is incredible not only did she pull off um, authentic truly disturbing attacks of all shapes and sizes in this. Um, she did it with very re- limited resources, really just talent, and 
several times, um, including this attack, um, she did it in camera, in, in, in a one shot without cutting. Um, so she's just insanely ridiculously talented. I've worked on a ton of horror Thank movies you. and she was easily one of my favorite effects artists, if not the favorite. So, um, so if anyone's watching, please hire her. She's, yeah. yeah. Um, and and my, my actresses, I really want to talk to you real quick. Um, uh, if the people you're portraying watch this, what do you want to say to them? Oh. Wow. <laughs> That's a mic dropping out the door. Good uh, luck. Oh. I mean, I'm sorry you didn't deserve it. And I hope that you've been able to find some sort of peace as hard as I'm sure it has been. I mean, what more can you say to that? It's so, I mean, it's such a, I honestly don't even have words. It's, it's, it's just disgusting. It's vile and it, it should never go on to anyone, especially these lives that are so young and innocent and have so much ahead of them. I would echo exactly what Lauren said. I think she said it perfectly and that, you know, we should be saying their names rather than this terrible person's name. Um, yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, that might be the, the best place to, to leave it off. Um, just before we wind down, um, if you haven't seen the back, like, normally when we have a movie on or a guest from a said movie on, we do a, a review on a, on, we have what we call the slab table. So like, obviously being on the slab we have we do it out of slabs of meat where some people do stars um if you weren't involved in this movie what what do you think you'd score it from what you've seen obviously Devin, you've seen it i i mean i'm it's hard for me to answer that um obviously it's kind of my baby i've i've wanted to make this movie um for a very long time in this way and uh so i'm i'm a little close to it normally i can Normally, because any other movie, actually, I, I've done a lot of them. I can tell you honestly, like as a horror fan, what you should watch, what you shouldn't watch, and I could score it honestly. But um, because it is so close to me, um, and because um, because the subject matter, uh, I don't think I could accurately rate it. But um, I absolutely can encourage you to watch it. I think I do think there's something for everyone here. I think regardless of what kind of subgenre you enjoy, whether you're a horror fan, whether you're you know a mainstream fan, I think there is something for you. And um, I think if nothing else, there's talking points and takeaway. And um, it's been just for the few people who've seen it, the the screenings and con, and the few reviewers have seen it. Um, it's something that stays with you and something that people have wanted to discuss amongst their friends amongst their peers amongst other people online so i what i can say is definitely watch it because there's something to get out of it for sure and my cast lauren, and my crew are obviously awesome so lauren elizabeth that's just a a a, a real hard question for her because she just dropped jews with that one <laughs> that's a little bit of a payback question <laughs> um, no, and obviously I think personally I personally think, though, uh, genuinely, um, again, not just because I love Devony and because I've got to do some amazing effects work on this. If you are a true crime fan, but you really love the emphasis of true, I really think that this will rate higher for you because it's no longer that Hollywood glitz and glam version of true crime. It is a more in-depth and genuine version of true crime. It really, it really puts the true in it. So I think if you are someone who prefers true crime even over horror i think this will be a heavy hitter for that people more on that side of that uh, subgenre yeah Obviously, I, I'll, I'll go ahead all right well just to add on to that too i think the way that it's shot is so interesting because it's something that i've never really seen done before especially in this specific category of film and it really we kind of touched on it earlier but it really i think is going to force people to not only be uncomfortable but to like really sit in that for a prolonged period and i think that will have a really really crazy effect as as a viewer so i'm definitely very excited to see it for that reason you know? <laughs> the 
the closest I can think to the way this was shot would be probably the original Texas Chainsaw. It was real rough, gritty, rough. kind of yeah. dark. Okay, um, yeah, I can totally see that. Now, I love that. Obviously, <laughs> obviously the style the style is different because it's a it's pretty, it's nearly like a POV, um, where the other one wasn't. But it was that kind of tense, dark, ish yes. to an extent, um, situation that happened. Um, no, I did. I did throw it out just just to be a, a bit of a dickhead because you left the girls with a tough question. That's why I asked you to rate it yourself. <laughs> no, very fair, very very fair. Absolutely. Um, I, I can give you my rating if you want. I would love it. Uh, um, obviously, I said to you, I'm not a not a true crime person at all. Didn't realize this is a true story until, obviously, somewhat leaked through it, and I, I had an idea, but when it comes up and tells you that it's a true story as well. Um, I would say geez, somewhere between four and four and a half out of five. Thank you. I was I was hooked, and for me, normally as I says movies like this don't really uh, tend to hit home with me. I was like, no. And as I says, I normally side with the killer. Didn't do it. Well, I did, but then I didn't. When I remembered, I was like, no, probably shouldn't do that. So as you says, the narrative changes. Um, but uh, what a hell of a job and a well earned a well earned um, can nod as well thank you thank you so much for for having me the what sorry I was just saying one of many change perspectives hopefully because maybe you can finally officially say now we have officially the first perspective flip so let's hope that that ball keeps rolling that's exactly the impact i think we all wanted so i'm happy to hear you say that and uh i'd be intrigued to see what what where your your careers progress from here um no doubt they're going to be on the up and up yes thank you well uh uh, elizabeth and and lauren um who are two of my fresh faces i really um as a horror fan, you probably saw from our cast, there's a lot of uh, genre veterans and um, and prolific actors involved. And um, every major horror franchise is represented in it as well. But um, Lauren and Elizabeth are two of my my fresh faces, fresh meat. Rookies, and, uh, as they, they would. <laughs> they, uh, they beat out almost 5,000 other girls for these roles. So it really is a testament to just how incredibly talented they are. And um, I hope this is a lot for them. I, I think that you're going to be seeing a lot more from from them um, as actors and uh, and hopefully you'll follow their work. And uh, as well as um, uh, Chelsea and, and Lara, who are obviously uh, well on their way already. And Missy, who is a genre regular. Absolutely, yes. we have a movie coming up too, so. We do, Absolutely. yeah, we did another one. That's how Devony and I met. So from one horror movie yeah. to the next, and the next, and the next. If I wasn't a makeup so, artist, I'd be a screen queen. So, so, so basically what you're telling me is you, you, you will all make another appearance at some stage. Yes. Yes. Uh, Absolutely. W- w- once the next horror movie is ready for each of you, I expect you back here. Absolutely. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have a quick shameless plug. I don't know when it's coming out in UK, but... Um, if you're watching this in the US, uh, my latest horror movie, The Flood, which is a gator movie, creature feature. Um, yeah, I that need comes to see that. The- yes, that's out in theaters uh, July 14th here in the States. Uh, so so please check it out there. And then um, I will figure out when it's coming out in the UK so uh, we can share with friends over there too. As far as Black Mass, um, I'm not sure when we're posting this yet, but we do have uh, festivals, a world premiere and an EU premiere, excuse me, uh, that we are not going to say right here, but I will uh, share with your fabulous host who can put it in uh, in the comments or in the description. So you can uh, hopefully join us and see the movie on the big screen where it's meant to be experienced. Absolutely. Um, Anyone else, anything that they want to promote before we, we kick this show over? I think we're good. I think this is just, this is the moment. It's the moment for Black Mass and hopefully a switch in how genres and true crime moves forward. So. Absolutely. Well I think, I think we'll just leave it with there then, will we? Um, yeah. Ladies, And you it's have been an our absolute- social media, so please do follow my, my cast and crew. Um, they have awesome things going on as well uh, as Black Mass. So, so please 
uh, connect with us all on social media. And if you see the movie and want to chat it out, um, I'm very active on there too. I love to discuss with everybody. So um, thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, I'll attach all the, well, I won't, Carl will. He'll attach all the, um, <laughs> I love all it. I the, love it. Uh, Car- Carl is the, uh, the technical side, although he is a, a host oh, as well, but he does all the technical work. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. Uh, I'm just, I'm just a pretty face that shows up. Yeah, yeah. Cool. and it was wonderful uh, speaking uh, with you. Thank you so much for having uh, us and giving us an opportunity to talk about uh, this different perspective. Absolutely, yeah. and thanks for giving me the chance to watch the movie. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, but what we'll do is, ladies and gentlemen, in the words of me, the way I finish this every Friday night, in the words of the great George A. Romero, stay scared. Love it.